Hello, this is Noreen Crown-Findlay from crownfindlay.com and toddytalkscrafts.com. I'm just trying to scooch around here so that I can get just the screen in the shot and not too much else. Now this screen is one of the projects in the Peg Looms and Weaving Sticks book that is being released September 1st of 2017 after some delays. Now, I wanted to just start off this particular video with some of the larger projects that are in the book. This one is a four panel screen and the panels are all woven using the same template. Now you can see that as you look down, you can see how towards the bottom there, well on the winter panel it's whites and in different shades. In spring it's quite a, a light shade of green and in each of the canopies of the trees show the different um, colors of the seasons. So that's one of the projects in Peg Looms and Weaving uh, Sticks. I also wanted to show you this is the flower that's on the front of the book. Now because it covers, oh my gosh, about a third of the cover of the book, it probably looks like it's way big and it's not. It's actually about, not quite four inches. But it's quite wonderful and I'm, I was a little surprised at first that they chose that for the cover, but I like it and they did too so hey they're the publishers they get to choose the cover so that's a couple of the projects i'm just going to turn the camera off and move some things around and then show you some more things people often think that peg loom weaving is uh, a fairly coarse kind of a weave but what i did for the seat cover for this wonderfully funky gypsy boho kind of chair is I did a seat cover that is quite fine. I used little steel um, weaving sticks that I got from, uh, I think it's called Digrad or Degrad in Britain. And so I was able to make very fine weave. I'm just going to tilt the um, tripod thingy here so I can come down closer. So you can see this is a very fine weave. And this is also one of the projects in Peg Looms and Weaving Sticks. And on to the next. The next project is a yoga bag, yoga mat bag. And it has a carrying strap. I'm just trying to pan up and down here. And it's quite gorgeous. Again, all woven on the peg loom. And here's the uh, strap. And in the book I also show you how to make uh, buttons using weaving sticks or peg loom. And the yoga bag has yarn dolly trim at the ends of the, uh, of the strap. So, a very handy thing indeed. The next project that I'm going to share with you today is a very wild and wonderful upholstered chair that I wove on the peg loom. I used a 22 inch wide peg loom for this one and uh, Briggs and Little uh, Wool. In, I think this is the Atlantic is the it's a number four medium weight slightly heavier almost a super weight now this chair has been lived with now I finished it ooh, two years ago at least and it's been well and truly lived with we have two small dogs who are up on everything a, a grandson and it is doing quite nicely now, in the book, I do show you how to measure out your chair and then how to apply the upholstery fabric to your chair. I'm going to spin this around so you can see the back. Ooh. 
There we go. And there's the back. So you don't have to make your upholstery as wild and colorful as this one, but I thought, oh, why not go for Baroque and make it crazy, wild, and colorful and just fun. Winters here are long and dark and cold, and so we need a little color. And so this is a chair to curl up in, in the winter cold. The seat cover, the mat that I wove for the, our vintage uh, Swedish wooden bench is more restrained in color. I've shown you pretty wild and woolly colors so far. But I thought, um, why not do some wild things and some more restrained. Now, one of the things that I am really pleased about is that I have figured out how to weave square motifs on the peg loom or with weaving sticks. And so what I did for this um, uh, chair, well, bench mat, you could also use it on the floor, is I combined circles and squares together in the one piece. Now you don't need to have a large loom in order to weave mats and rugs. You can weave uh, any size rug by weaving them in components and stitching them together. This one, I would definitely put some of that um, non-slip fabric underneath if I was going to use it on the floor. But it's uh, nice. I used thick, squishy uh, roving yarn from uh, Briggs and & Little and it makes quite a nice, squishy, soft bench cover. Seat cover. Seat pad. Seat rug. Runner. Whatever you want to call it. Thing. Beautiful thing to sit on. Or beautiful thing to use on the floor. Or beautiful thing to use as a table runner. Yay. I like it. This is what we call our mermaid bench. One of the reasons is because the tapestry mermaid lives above it, but also there's a couple of mermaids on it. Uh, it was from a church that closed down and uh, all, everything was being sold. And so we bought uh, this wonderful old deacon's bench. And then I painted it and made woodburn, woodburn um, medallions for it. Now, I just want to show you uh, one of the wonderful things about stick loom weaving and peg loom weaving. This big flower, is the same pattern as the little flower. You use smaller peg looms or weaving sticks and thinner yarns and you get a whole different size. So this one, the bench mat, is woven with Briggs and Little roving and it's, it's about five feet long, maybe a bit longer, mm, six feet, something like that. Big, big, long. And so the, the nice cushiness of the uh, roving yarn is quite wonderful on it. And so that's, that's the first preview from the Peg Looms and Weaving Sticks book. I'll do more previews with more projects from the book. And uh, hope that, uh, you'll, I hope that you'll love the projects. I certainly did. And I hope you'll really enjoy weaving them. Peg looms and weaving sticks are pure magic. So happy weaving and I'll be back with more goodies that you can weave.